Welcome back to Great SpaceX. It's been a long time since we've done a highlight on exciting news and developments taking place at Starbase, so we've got a lot to cram in on today's episode. We've got the latest updates on the completion progress of the Catching Tower. There's also interesting information on building the next generation of Starship with Booster 5 and Ship 21. Along with that, other components were transported to Starbase in the past few days. All in all, today's program will cover a wide range of topics. But first, if you're new to our channel, a sincere welcome from the Great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you won't miss any of SpaceX's latest news on our channel. Go ahead and grab your favorite drink and let's simmer down on today's episode. We're starting off this episode with an update on the launch tower, namely the chopstick carriage. Despite the lack of hops over recent months, SpaceX's Starbase continues to be a hive of activity with preparations ongoing for both the upcoming orbital test flight of Booster 4 and Ship 20, and the future acceleration of launch cadence with follow-on vehicles. Most of the recent focus has been directed at the orbital launch site, specifically the tank farm and the Mechazilla additions to the launch tower. And recently, we have seen the catching arm lifted and installed after all these months of waiting. To allow these large devices to be installed, to allow these large devices to be installed on the tower, SpaceX opted to remove Booster 4 from the mount, enabling additional clearance and removing the risk of hitting Booster 4 during the complex lifts. The process of lifting is not easy. First, they lifted the catching mechanism carriage, and later flipped it vertically. They then moved the carriage and posed it on the taller red structure. The chopsticks will be assembled any day now, and the whole structure will be installed on the launch tower afterwards. The orbital tower is almost ready. Great job, SpaceX team. Then the giant arms could be tested with Ship 20's installation onto Booster 4 ahead of a full WDR, or wet dress rehearsal. However, Mechazilla's somewhat more fascinating role to catch the vehicles returning to the launch site after flight is not expected to be tested until at least the flight of Booster 5 and Ship 21. Speaking of, let's talk about the updates on the next generation of Starship. Although SpaceX is still entangled with legal issues related to orbital flight that make the Ship 20 and Booster 4 complex unable to fly, the construction progress at the production site has not slowed down. They're preparing for the next iteration of Starship. And SpaceX appears to have delivered hardware that will eventually become part of the first 33-engine Super Heavy Booster to its South Texas Starbase factory. Allow me to analyze it in detail. The giant coin-like structure was spotted arriving at Starbase on Tuesday afternoon. It came either from SpaceX's Hawthorne, California headquarters and Falcon Rocket Factory or a smaller fabrication shop collocated on the company's McGregor, Texas development and testing campus. Unlike Falcon Boosters, the latest variant of which relies on a structure known as an octaweb that's bolted together from dozens of structural elements, SpaceX has moved towards more monolithic thrust pucks for Starship and Super Heavy. Starship's central thrust puck is just two or so meters in diameter and designed to support the ship's three gimbling Raptor center engines. Super Heavy's puck is actually more like a giant steel coin than Starship's almost conical thrust structure, measuring some five to six meters across, but no more than 10 centimeters thick. It's also designed to support a good deal more than three Raptors. That's where Tuesday's delivery becomes significant. Unlike older booster thrust pucks, one of which was actually delivered to Starbase, likely for Super Heavy B6 just last week, this newer puck features a few design changes. Most importantly, it bumps the number of Raptor center engine hardpoints to 13. Slightly earlier instances, including the puck currently packed with Raptors on Super Heavy B4, have an outer circle of eight Raptors and a ninth engine at the very center. In line with comments made by CEO Elon Musk in early July, SpaceX's newest Super Heavy Thrust Puck updates both figures, boosting the outer ring to 10 engines and inner cluster to 3 engines for a total of 13 Raptors. 
combined with a ring of 20 fixed Raptor Boost engines installed on the inside of Super Heavy's aft skirt, a 13 engine puck will allow SpaceX to install up to 33 engines on Super Heavy boosters. Using present day first generation Raptor 1 engines, a Super Heavy booster with 33 engines installed could produce up to 6100 tons of thrust at liftoff. Once SpaceX has qualified and ramped up production of next-generation Raptor 2 engines, Super Heavy's max thrust at liftoff could jump to almost 7,600 tons, more than twice that of the current record holder, NASA's famous Saturn V moon rocket. Moreover, on October 5th and 6th, two large tanks were delivered to Starbase. These two white tanks are of the same size, possibly containing liquid methane in preparation for the next tests of Starship. These follow-on vehicles are already being processed at the production site, with Booster 5 currently being stacked inside the high bay. The production cadence has been chiefly focused inside the production tents with numerous barrel sections and nose cones, some of which are already undergoing TPS application. Recently, we've seen images of grid fins delivered overnight, but we're not sure if this generation of Starship can optimize the weight as Elon Musk desired. It's likely for Booster 5. Besides, SpaceX is also speeding up the shipping process of Ship 22 sections. Recently, the common dome and aft dome parts have been spotted. So, once SpaceX presses through the initial test flights, numerous Numerous ships and boosters will be stacked, requiring additional high bay capacity. SpaceX is already building a more extensive, wider facility to the north of the current high bay to cater for this. For the past few weeks, foundation construction has been underway, with the new bay's walls set to emerge from the Earth next month. In the meantime, after completing Ship 20's first cryoproof test on September 29th, SpaceX will hopefully be able to kick off the first six-engine Raptor static fire test campaign within the next week or so. With any luck, the start of B5-S21 assembly also means that the orbital launch pad is nearly ready to support Super Heavy B4's first proof tests, even if static fires with anything close to a full set of 29 Raptors appear to be weeks away. Regardless, it looks like it won't be long before SpaceX will be juggling two pairs of orbital class starships and Super Heavy boosters. And that's all the information we have for today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help us with a little nudge, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. And be sure to leave a comment about what your thoughts are. We always get a kick out of reading them. As always, this is Kevin, and my team and I will see you next time.